It's the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. In today's championship match, Nick Varner, the number one player in the world, takes on Efren Reyes, the number eight ranked player in the world, but many people will tell you he's really 1A. Welcome inside the Holiday Inn jam-packed crowd, getting ready for the number three major of the year on the Pro Tour. This one, the title gets $15,000, and we are down to two. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Wilotion. Nice to have you with us. This is the 19th U.S. Open, which makes it to historical. This is the longest-running tournament in the history of the Pro Tour. 88 players came a few days ago trying to get to this position, to get to this prestigious spot. We are down to two, and many consider them the two best players in the world. We bring in our very special player, Alan Hopkins, our analyst today. There's something about this tournament that brings out the best in the competition. <laughs> These are probably two of the best players in the world right now. Without a doubt they are, but another thing about the event, not, is it, not only is it the longest run event it's also the toughest event to win in the last 19 years only 11 players have won this event that shows you how tough it is to win but you have you couldn't ask for a better finals Nick Varner and Ephraim Reyes both of them are on top of their game Ephraim Reyes just finished second in the world tournament and he's always very hard to beat and Nick Varner he is the one to beat. He's the number one player on the Pro Billiards Tour. Well, we start with Efren Reyes, and let's talk about number two in the World Championships. He's done that a few times. He hasn't come up with that big major win in the U.S. yet. Well, Efren's the magician. You know, he got some bad roles. He didn't get any breaks to even try to win the tournament. When he played Earl Strickland, Earl just came out, and he was on fire. There was no chance for him to win. And Johnny Archer did the same thing to him. We're going to have to see what happens today because... Ephraim can win from anywhere. He's dominated from everywhere, that's for sure. The comeback kid in this has been Varner. He's just played so well, and he's looking at his third U.S. Open title. You're probably talking about the toughest player in the world today to beat. I was watching him play a match with Kim Davenport, and the score was 11-11. Nick missed the nine ball, and Kim came up, made the nine ball, broke the balls, didn't make a ball, and Nick stepped to the table and ran two racks and out after missing the nine ball which was a very pretty simple shot he should have made. So Nick is always in there. No matter what happens to him, he doesn't get upset. He's breaking the balls very good, and he's running out. He's going to be very hard to beat. Nick Varner, number one in the world this year, hasn't finished worse than seventh in any tournament. He's been a dominant factor in the game so far. He's won the U.S. Open and the Nine Ball Championships in 89 and 90. He's the only player to win the U.S. Open back-to-back. -back. He also won the 89 World Nine Ball Champion. He's been the number one player for a three-year rating on the Pro Billiards Tour up to date. That's a three-year rating. That's not only up to date for the one year. He's also got a three-year rating. The road to the championships was not easy. Comebacks all over the place and close scores. He's had a lot of close matches, Dave. He's, he beat. He won his first match 13-10 and his second match 13-12. His next match was against Adam, who's a Phil, uh, Philippine player. He beat him 13-12, and then he beat Kim Davenport. It's the match I was talking about, 13-12. And then Tommy Kennedy, he uh, beat 13-3. One-sided in the uh, semifinals, but that's the only one-sided, really, uh, in the entire tournament. Now we go to Efren Reyes, who... Uh, Hasn't played in only about half the tournaments, but again, always seems to get to the end. He's been knocking on the door for a while now. He's due to win a major event, uh, one of these majors, the World Tournament of the U.S. Open. It looks like he's got a good shot at the U.S. Open. Uh, he's, had, he's had a nice road. He's beat every one of his opponents by at least four games. No one's gotten close to, win, to the final. He beat Christensen 13-6, Mike Zyrus 13-4, Mike Massey 13-8, Howard Vickery 13-6, and Steve Miserak. 13-9, and then Tony Ellen, 13-4. Uh, and the closest was Miserec, and that was in the quarterfinals. Otherwise, it has been domination totally. Neither of these players has lost. They both came out of the winner's bracket. Here's the rules for uh, the way we'll play today. Yes, yeah, so the lowest numbered ball is hit in rotation on the table. In other words, the one ball would be hit first if it was on the table. After the break, you can push out. You're allowed one push out per game. There's fouls on all balls for TV matches. Race to nine we play, and the referee has the final authority. Referee today is Bob Adams. Done a great job, all the referees this this year, and Bob is from hometown Chesapeake, Virginia. In case you're wondering, Reyes and uh, Varnon have met several times over the years, too numerous to count totally, but uh, a slight edge would probably go to Nick Varner. Last go to Nick Varner. Last time they met was in Orlando. It was in the semifinals. Varner was a winner 9-7.
Reyes had Nick down 6-1 to one and Varner stormed back. So you can never, ever think it's over with Varner. Dave, I said uh, earlier that Ephraim Reyes had beat uh, Tony Allen 13-4. Well, that was 9-4. That was a TV match, and it was uh, raced to 9. So he had beaten Tony, Tony Allen 9-4, and Nick Varner uh, had won his match against Tommy Kennedy. Also 9-3. to three. Those matches were TV matches, and I'm just correcting myself on that. Suffice to say, both these players have been impressive in their road to the final. $15,000 awaits the winner. It started with 88. You're down to these two, and I, I think if you were picking when the week started, uh, most of the so-called experts probably would have gone with these two gentlemen. These two players would have been included in the list if you were to have to pick like 10 players who were going to win this tournament. And Nick continues to break the balls. Great. Those two cue balls coming back with the one ball. And a nice break. Notice the cue ball and the one ball together. That's important when you break the balls. If you can keep those two balls together, usually you have a shot or a safety. Now, it looks like Nick can may be able to make the one down the corner. I don't know if the eight's in the way or not. But if it's not, he'll probably elect to play a safety. So the four ball was a race, so... That's why he continues to shoot. Nick will put the cue ball behind the six ball and put the one ball up table by the nine ball. Oh, he put it by the five ball. Okay, but notice the cue ball behind the six ball. He wanted to make sure that he kept the cue ball snookered from hitting the one ball. Reyes, the, they call him the master, the magician, the great touch. Uh, he doesn't mind playing a safety game. <laughs> no, he loves this part of the, uh, the game right here. He, he hardly ever misses the ball when he kicks at it, misses hitting it. Oh, my goodness, what a shot. <laughs> there you go. He took the one ball in. You can hear the oohs and the ahs, and this is a hard crowd to impress. Probably the most knowledgeable of any of the crowds in the country. Look at this shot. One ball right in the side without even touching a rail. That mm. was a great shot, great kick shot. And now he has a nice table. Ball's laid out nice. I believe only have a problem. He'll play the three ball on the side, and he'll bounce off the rail and come back out here for the five ball in the corner. You saw early in the graphics eight international titles, but never a major title in the United States. Despite the sev several opportunities, you think, though, you said it's just, uh, you believe, coincidence that people have played great against him when he's gotten to that final plateau. Well, you can call it what you like, Dave. Hard luck, coincidence, whatever. I just think that eventually he's going to have to be able to win one because he just keeps, he just keeps being there. He keeps knocking on the door. Uh, he's a great shot maker. It's a great shot right there. Notice the cue ball. It just comes off the rail nice and soft for the seven ball. It's got a great stroke. And his knowledge of the game of, of uh, pocket billiards is enormous. He's having a little problem getting in line. It seems like he wanted to be straight in on the eight. He's got a little angle on it. So probably hold it up with a little inside, a little right hand English low. Notice how the cue ball just moves very little. Nice speed. Well, you're not kidding. I'm sure his heart skipped the beat for a second. It looked like it might hit and not go in, but there it is. So the first chapter belongs to the gentleman from the Philippines. One nothing, Reyes. To make a run here. He's a star in Manila. He really is. They call him the father of pool there. He, the captain of Team Philippines, teaches, coaches. This is a father figure to some. Really a hero. 39 years of age. He'll hit the cue ball low, trying to hit it with an extreme draw, and the cue ball just go in the center and stop. And he's made a ball. He's made the corner ball. And does he get a shot? Wow, that's big right there. That one mm -hmm. ball came out. He's got a shot. He's going to be awful tough to beat if he keeps making a ball and getting a shot. It did just peel away, I think, from the three ball, didn't it? I think he's made two balls on the break. He's got the one ball and the two balls right here. He'll play the one ball with low right hand English and draw the cue ball down to this area somewhere for the two ball. He's hit it perfect. You sound like a broken record. You said that about <laughs> 30 times already, didn't that? But it's true. Execution is He's playing great. Awesome. Now 
Mr. Cue Ball how it come off the rail and died. The right hand English, after it hits the rail, kills the cue ball. Now he's got the three and the four balls right here, so he'll just make the three and basically stop right there for the four ball. Basically, that's what he did. In fact, drew it a little bit closer to make it easier. Still has the perfect angle. Here's a nice draw shot. He's going to use low left hand English and bring the cue ball up to around here for the six ball. Watch the cue ball come off the rail nice and easy, and the cue ball comes right up straight in for the six ball. Now, he's, the seven and the eight ball are far apart. Notice the seven ball and notice the eight ball. He's going to have to play position on the seven ball so that he, it'll be easy to get down table for the eight ball. So he'll bring the cue ball back and get a little closer to the seven ball. Drawing it off the rail and bring it back out so he's closer and has the angle. Notice the angle he's got on the seven ball. You need the angle to bring the ball back to where you want it. Yes, yeah, so he'll come off this rail and back down table here. I think he can handle these two balls, Dave. What do you think? I'd bet on it. We don't allow gambling on the Pro Billiards Tour, Dave. Thank you. Efren <laughs> Reyes doing his impersonation of Earl Strickland in the World Championships. He looks terrific. And now that lead, remember it's only a race to nine, starting to look pretty good to Efren Reyes. On the other hand, Ephraim is sit back a little more. He's going to be more arm motion. He's going to use his arm to break the balls more so than Nick. Watch his arm and his arm is... And then his body just comes up in the air. So he's mostly all arm. Interesting, his front foot never moved, whereas Varner's moved about a foot. <laughs> Nick gets all 130 or 40 pounds into it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's a small guy. Reyes will break again. Four to one the lead, but don't forget, earlier this year in Orlando, Reyes built up a 6-1 lead on Varner and lost. If he keeps making a ball on the break and the one ball keeps going down by that corner, he's going to be awfully tough to beat. As a matter of fact, it'd be impossible to beat if that happens. Now, right now, he's, he's made a ball on the break and the one ball is down by the bottom corner, but the six ball and the five ball seem to be in the way. The six ball is here and the five ball is here, so it stops him from doing a massé shot because of the five ball. He may have to do a jump shot, a little bit of a jump shot, or he may be able to make the one straight in. So the three ball disappeared on the break and ooh, didn't he, go. He tried to throw it in again with that English and it didn't take. Now if he'd have made the one ball, he had the two ball where he could have banked the two ball or played a safety, but he was in a jam there. And Here's a break for Nick Varner because Ephraim makes that, you know, that's a, that's a big lead. Uh, five to one's a big lead, but right now Nick has a chance to get to the table and you never know what'll happen. Where is the trouble on this table? Okay, Nick's got the one ball in the corner. He's got to keep the two, he's going to go into the two ball, it looks like, with the cue ball. And try to hit the two ball with the cue ball. And he hits it, don't go in now. Okay, good. Now he wants a little angle on this. May it come off for an angle. So if he, if he has an angle on the two ball, he really doesn't have any problem as long as he can get on the four ball. As the balls are open pretty nicely, the six ball's in the middle of the table, and if it gets on the six straight in, he has the seven ball. But right now, he wants to draw the cue ball back and over for the four ball. He'll hit this with low and a little bit of left-hand English. Bringing the cue ball back. Now he has an angle on the four ball. So he wants to check what angle he wants on the five ball because he has to get good on the six ball because the six ball's in the middle of the table here. So right now the position he's going to play for the five ball determines where he's going to play the six ball. He'll hit this one with low left hand English again. Mm. That's the first mm. real mistake in the tournament. That's a, shot he that's a shot you won't see Nick miss too mm. often. Nick should not should miss it. He overcuts the ball. He hits it on the outside of the pocket. Hits the point and goes into the other point. And comes off. Just misses the ball. And the low left hand English is what made him miss that. The left hand English over over through the ball. Now he's left Ephraim a chance to go ahead with a very nice comfortable lead. Low right hand English. Bring the cue ball back for the side pocket. He wants to be straight in first real mistake of this match. It's a big miss right there. I don't, I don't know if the lead had anything to do with it or not because Nick got perfect on the four ball. 
Now, Ephraim has an angle on the six ball, so if he can get a picture of this, he's going to go to the bottom rail and come back up to the middle table for the seven ball. With right hand angle, she spins it around, brings it right back in the middle table. He's checking to see if the eight ball goes past the nine ball. If it does, he'll bring the cue ball over to the other side of the table and play the eight ball in the same pocket. He has to get up. Oh, he's hit that a little too easy. He didn't, he didn't want an angle going up table. Notice the angle he has. He's going to play the eight ball in here. The angle is down here with the cue ball. He, he didn't want that. He wanted to be straight in. So Ephraim's going to have to bring the cue ball. He'll pocket the eight ball in this corner and bring the cue ball one, two, three rails over here and play the nine. He'll put the cue ball over here somewhere. Tough shot. Speed control is very important. One, two, three rails. And that's exactly about what he wanted to do. Guess it doesn't matter with him. He can make a mistake and bail himself out. He just worked himself into a 5-1 lead. And uh, Nick Varner after his third U.S. Open title. Mike Siegel has three. Earl Strickland has three. Ooh. There he got a lucky break there. Uh. He didn't scratch. He let the cue ball get away from him, and now he's got a nice opportunity uh, to uh, get this rack. We all, I almost thought he was going to hit the, <laughs> he's got the, the cue ball. ball with the cue for a second. Here's the two ball, and here's the cue ball. He's got a shot in the side with the two ball. He can't make it in the corner because of the eight ball, it looks like. But if he can make it in the corner, he may pocket it in the corner. If he, it goes past the eight, he'll pocket it in the corner. Looks like it does. Looks like he has enough room. No, he's playing it in the side. Side pocket. He'll you know, come back down table in the center of the table for the three ball. Center ball. Just make the two. Got it. And now he's got a nice layout. He's got an angle on the three ball. He can pocket the three in the corner and with low right hand edge come off the rail and back out here for the four ball. Now he may, if it goes past the corner here, he may just bring the cue ball over here for the four ball. I think he'll make sure he has a shot. He won't let the six ball come into play. Okay, you've decided to get straight in, straight on the four. And he'll play the four ball in the corner, and if he can, if he can come off the rail or stop right there, he'll stop right there to play the five in the opposite corner. Okay, a little angle on the four ball, so he spun the four ball in and brought the cue ball back out on the other side. Now his position for the nine ball, he'll bring the cue ball two rails around. He'll bring the cue ball over here, back out here, and back out to the middle table for the six ball with low left hand angle, not touching the nine at all. There it is. Looks like it's going to be a break and run out. Low right hand, let's bring the cue ball back out for an angle on the seven ball. He got the number one ball on the break and then methodically put them all away. Notice I've been saying he always wants an angle. Now he wants to get straight in on the eight ball in the corner. He'll bring it off the rail and try to get straight in. Just about there. Just about perfectly straight. He'll roll the eight ball in, come down near the bottom rail. Not too much for the nine ball. Nice and softly, he'll roll it in. Can't ask for a better job than mm -hmm. that right there, Dave. He's playing great. I have to admire the way both are playing. 5-3 now. We'll be back with more from the U.S. Open nine ball championships right after this. It's the third time now in this game he's tried that. It hasn't worked. Well, he didn't get the cue ball where he wanted to again, Dave. He let Ephraim be able to see the ball and hit it, and that cost him uh, the safety play right there. So it all comes down to the break right here. If he makes a ball, he didn't make a ball, so Nick's still alive. Yeah, and that's really what's kept Varner in, in the match. And the Varner fans, you hear them. Unfortunately, he's le he's not, he hasn't left an easy shot, and the table is is a little difficult. Notice the five and six ball and eight ball. Mm -hmm. They're all down here. And the one ball is here, and the two ball is here. What Nick has to make sure is that he doesn't make the one ball and get down here behind the three and seven. 
he may even play a safety here. But I don't think he wants to take his chances with his safeties anymore. He's a little yeah. off on them, Dave. I, I hear you. At any rate, he's going to take his time and decide what he wants to do. Really and truly, you're, you're looking at one of the great players of the game, two-time U.S. Open champion, a world champion. He's uh, won a straight pool world title. Yes, he has. He's going to play a safety. He's going to put the one ball down table and the cue ball over behind the two ball. Did he hit it hard enough? Oh, he hit mm, a great, great shot. Go. That's a great shot, Dave. Oh, boy, it is. I don't know how Reyes can figure out a way out of this one. Well, I wouldn't bet that he doesn't hit it. Ephraim will go to the bottom rail. He's got the cue ball right behind the two, so he's going to be forced to hit it a certain way. Now, he's going to go to the bottom rail and come over here to this rail and try to hit the one ball. What kind of English you got to put on this one? Well, he's going to hit it hard, I believe. But there's one thing. He may have to go from here to this rail over to this rail and lengthen it out and come over to the one right here. Now, if he catches, now, if you notice, if he catches the cue ball right here, you notice, you watch when he kicks it. If the cue ball hits there, he should hit the one ball. And he knows that, so he'll be playing the cue ball to hit there. He'll use right hand English, running English, and he'll hit it pretty hard. He, oh, got it. Great shot. Oh, goodness. And look at that. Look at that shot. There is no real great shot left for Varner. What a master. Notice the shot. He got right where he wanted to. Caught the point. He hits the one. Very thin. He got kind of lucky here. He hits it real thin, and he brings the cue ball back behind the six ball. That's a great shot. A little fortunate, though, and unlucky for Nick Varner. You just can't play any better than that. <laughs> I mean, Varner hit the shot that he wanted to on the safety. And the man from Milan... That's just unbelievable. Mm. That, that's a great shot. I mean, he just hit the one ball perfect. He, he just leaves you speechless. Now Nick's going to try to kick the one in. He's going to hit right English and come down and try to kick the one in. Oh, great Look shot. at here. Look at this shot. Oh. <laughs> Folks, you're watching something special right here. This is a great shot. He hits right hand English on the cue ball, jumps the ball up in the air, comes off the rail with the English, hits the one ball almost full in the face, double kisses it, sends it on the other side of the nine ball, and the cue ball goes right behind the nine. That's a great break for Nick Warner. And he's going to come to the bottom rail again and try to hit this with right hand English. He's got to watch he doesn't scratch. And there's a scratch. Yep. That's what he, he got had to be the careful. ball, but you said you warned him. <laughs> He oh had my to make God, that, sure he didn't scratch. Hey, that's the first mistake he's made. I mean, he's won three in a row in the battle of defense. Finally, it was Varner to win one. There's nothing he could do about that shot. That was very tough to hit. But Nick made a great shot oh. on, on, the, on the one ball. They both made fabulous shots. Really? Now Nick's got his work cut out running the table. Yeah, this is not an easy setup by any means. No, it isn't. But he and has a full to. table still there. Well, the one, two, and three are in nice positions, but the whole problem is the five ball. The five and the six. He shoots his left-handed. Nick shoots lefty and righty. He shoots lefty very, very good. Are there uh, many pros that can do that? Yes, most, most of us can do that. Mike Siegel plays very good uh, opposite-handed. So does Buddy Hall and Earl Strickland. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, he made a mistake. I don't know if he got it or not. Yes, he has it. He'll play the three ball in the side pocket. And the cue ball will come down here, one, two, and up table for the four ball. Now he'll figure the position he wants on the four ball to get on the five. It all depends on where, what he does with the five ball. I believe he, he wants to come down to the bottom end of the table for the five ball. So he's going to play position on the four to make it easy for himself. He'll bring the cue ball up by the side pocket. He has to make sure he doesn't scratch on this shot, too. He'll, go, he'll make sure he gets to the rail, I believe. He did. He's on the rail. He's coming off. He's got an angle on the four ball. Notice the angle. He's hit that perfect. He has a nice angle. He'll take the cue ball. He'll hit the cue ball with high left-hand English and bring the cue ball two rails, two rails down this way 
back here and he wants to come out here for the five ball. This is a speed shot. Did he get there? Looks like he hit it. Looks like he hit it perfect. Mm -hmm. That's a that's such a great shot right there. The speed at which he hit that to make it come over and land within within six inches or three inches of where you want it. Now he has to come out in the middle of the table. He should come for the six ball. He'll hit the cue ball with low right hand. I should make sure he has a shot on the six ball. He won't touch the eight with the cue ball at all. There it is. Well, I'll take a chance, Dave, and say that he gets this table here. When he does, it will be one of the more classic tables of the night, <laughs> of the tournament. The way they played defense and battled back and forth in the beginning. It's a great game. Here's a three-rail shot. Laid perfect to come right. Notice how his position. The cue ball is coming toward the eight ball. Now he's straight in on the eight. He'll just pocket the eight, and he'll roll down a little bit for the nine ball in the opposite corner. Bounce off the rail. edition worthy of being called the U.S. Open Championship. Nick Varner and Efren Reyes putting on a show here in Chesapeake. And money to see this one are definitely getting their money's worth. Efren Reyes jumped out in front, built up a fifth one, five to one lead. Nick Varner's been battling back. Now it's seven to five. The last game of this match was a classic with some unbelievable defensive play by both players and then Varner finally prevailed after he'd lost three times in defensive struggles to the Philippine master. That instance right there, he made a great safety, and Ephraim just made a great hit. Let's see how he breaks him. It all, this is where it tells the story right here, Dave. Hitting the one ball solid and hope he doesn't scratch on the cue ball. He make the one ball. No. Did he make a ball? He needs to make mm -hmm. a ball. It's odd how uh, neither player has really been able to capitalize on their break. That has not been the story in this particular match. Well, it's not so bad because even though he didn't make a ball, it's a tough run out. Ephraim has a cut shot on the one ball. He'll play the one ball in this corner, but notice where the two ball is. He's got to bring the cue ball through these, th these three rails and back down table or off the side rail and back out. He's got his work cut out. It's not an easy shot now. He may just play to cut the two ball in and not try to get perfect on the two. But he also has the three and eight. The eight ball is blocking the pocket for the three ball, so he has his work cut out. If he runs out here, it'd be a great run out. There. Six ball got in the way. That was a tough break. He tried to shorten the angle at which the cue ball would come around the table, and he got a tough break. Now he has a bank shot on the two ball or a safety, either one he decides to do. Now the bank shot, he could bring the two ball on this rail back down table into here and bring the cue ball over here for position on the three ball on the side. Or he has a safety where he just hits the two ball up table and brings the cue ball right here behind these balls, behind the six and nine. Be interesting to see what he does. I think he's going to play a safety. He won't hit this real hard. He'll put the two ball up by a little past the side pocket. And watch out for the gully way here. He may have left the gully way. Notice the cue ball between the three and nine. He may have left Nick a shot between the three ball and the nine ball. That'd be a nice break for Nick if he can see the two ball. Crowd seems to think he didn't. Well, I think he did. All I right. think he left the passageway for the two ball right between the three and nine. And it looks like is how he's going to the shot that he has a chance. But now he's concerned about the three and eight. And this is not an easy shot after he makes if he makes the two ball he has lotus to pass That's a better angle yeah it does yeah. appear with enough english on the ball that you can get through well he, he has an open uh open passageway there dave he can he can just make the two ball but he wants to put english on it to come back up for the three with three eight combination he'll hit this very hard great shot That time the safety backfired. That's a great shot right there. He, hit, he hit it real hard. And he's got on the combination now for the eight. 
And what he's going to have to do now is make sure that the three ball doesn't go in with the eight ball. Because he, could, he has to make sure he has a shot after he pockets the three ball. So he's going to go into the six and nine ball, I think. This is a tough decision. The angle which he has, if he can hit the nine ball, he'll hit the nine ball with the cue ball and knock the nine out of the way so that he has a shot on the three ball next. Give him a shot. Mm. Okay, I think he's okay. I think he can go to the rail first and make the three ball. It's hard to tell from here, but no, it looks like he might have the three right straight in. He's okay. But he'll probably play, he'll play the cue ball up toward the side pocket. There it is. Now he's left a nice angle on the four, but he'll play the four in here and come off the rail for the five ball in the other corner, and he'll want the cue ball. He'll play the cue ball back on this side, of the, on the left-hand side of the table for the six ball. He'll hit the four ball with low left hand English and just bounce the cue ball off the rail. He'll leave an angle on the five ball. Notice the angle he has on the five ball. He'll play this shot with high right hand English and bring the cue ball back over here. Here he's going to play the five ball and come off the rail and back out here for the six ball. Okay, he's perfect. He's perfect at the nine ball, but the nine ball isn't blocking the seven. Now, he's going to have to play the six and come back on this side of the table over here for the seven ball somewhere if he can. Bounce off the rail a little bit. There it is. He made some great shots this rack to get out. Well, he did. Some concern now. Reyes is out. Two wins in a row for Nick Varner. And suddenly here in Chesapeake, it's 7 to 6. 7 to 6. Efren Reyes can hardly believe it. But it's been great play. You can't say anybody's lost this. Somebody's trying to win it. Yeah, the, Nick broke the balls last time, and uh, he left an open rack for effort, but it was a tough getting. It was tough getting from the one to the two, and he hit the six ball and end up making a bad safety. Now that's what I was talking about safeties. Nick's been doing that earlier in the match. Been leaving Ephraim just enough room to see the ball. Now what happens here is Ephraim has left just enough room for Nick to see the ball, and Nick took advantage of it and won the game. You can feel the nerves of everybody who's watching, <laughs> but how about these two guys? <laughs> I, I'll tell you the truth from experience. We're not even worried about what's going on. We're out there. But we want a shot. We want to play. I know when I'm playing in the finals, I'm not thinking about how nervous I am. I'm thinking about, give me a shot. I want to win. The Knicks made a great, a great break here. Did he make a ball? He needs to make a ball. Did he make a ball? No. Close, but no. There's a good opportunity for Ephraim now. We well, can't believe with as much velocity he had on that ball that nothing fell his way. Wow, he made a great break. Notice the notice the balls are all past the spot, except for three of them. He's knocked six balls past the spot, and he's left a wide open table for Ephraim. If Ephraim can make the one, he has a chance to win this rack. And he there makes the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great shot. Now he's got a nice shot on the two. He'll play the two ball in the corner and bring the cue ball over here for the three ball. That's a tough break for Nick. He broke the balls really well and hit them really hard and didn't make a ball. That's twice in a row now he's done that. Definitely fade a part of this game. Well, this is a nice layout here. I mean, he's, he, it's everything like elementary right here. The four ball in the corner. He's going to come off the side rail and play the five in the side. Everything just lays perfect. This is the same way you'd play the balls without numbers on them. To win a major tournament obviously you have to be able to play great but so many people can do that you, you have to get some good luck you have to get some breaks along the way don't you oh yeah yeah you, you have to get some rolls uh, if ever there was a time that Efren Reyes needed a break in a major title in this country <laughs> he would love to win the US Open this was it and and this might have been it 
great break. Nothing would fall for Varner. And the map of the table relatively easy this time around for Reyes. A really a nice layout here. This the eight in the side. Now just bringing cue ball down to the bottom rail for the nine ball. Now he's hit a little strong. He must have been straight in. At any rate, he's got a nice shot, nice chance to make the nine ball in the corner. There it is. Eight six. Efren Reyes. The 39 year old from the Philippines. Thinking. I've got to get one in on the break. That's the whole kit and caboodle right here. If I can do that, I'm in great shape. Reyes, remember, led 1-0 right off the bat. It was tied 1-1. Then four in a row made it 5-1. Varner never gave up. It was down to 7-6. Then that man, Nick Varner, couldn't make a ball on the break. Reyes ran the table. That's where, that's where we are. That's a tough break for Nick Varner and a good break for Ephraim Reyes. Nick Varner broke the balls perfect twice and didn't make a ball. Now let's see what happens with Ephraim's break. Ephraim may hit him a little bit easier than Nick did. He's going to try to play the one ball on the side. He'll keep the cue ball on the one ball, cue ball on the center table. He made a ball. And... He's got a shot. Oh, this could be over right now. He's got a nice layout here. He's made he's made a ball on the break. Crowd senses. Reyes, who's won eight international titles, could be on the way to his first major U.S. title. He's going to bring the cue ball around two rails in the middle of the table. Low left in English. One, two, back out in the center of the table. And he's hit it a little, little easy. But he's okay because the three ball's right here. Matter of fact, the three and the four are together. He, he's got a nice nice chance for a run out here. All depends what he decides to do with the cue ball here. Now, he has a little angle on the two ball, so he'll probably go to the bottom rail, back out for the three ball. So many times Reyes has played on television in a final here, and not one. Many people say he's snake bitten. Wondering how that could be. He's such a great player. Here he's coming off the bottom rail, back out, center for the three ball. That's a great shot. What do you think is uh, running through him right now? What kind of emotions is he feeling? I think right now he knows he's going to win the U.S. Open, to tell you the truth. Uh, he's not thinking negative at all. He's very positive. Uh, all champions are positive thinkers. And he's just thinking now that I'm, I've won this tournament. He won't show his expression until he's won it, but he's got a nice chance to run the table. Balls are open nicely for him, and he's playing great. He's got a nice angle on the five ball to come off the rail for the seven in the same pocket, and the whole secret's going to be from the eight to the nine. He has to get the right position on the eight to come down for the nine. He'll take his time, make sure he gets, he gets the right angle on the seven ball to come out for the eight ball. Okay, now here he's going to play two rails with the cue ball. He's going to bring the cue ball up here somewhere. High left hand English. Look out. Oh. <laughs> it kissed it but came around. Now he's got to watch the nine ball. He doesn't touch the nine ball. He doesn't want to touch the nine ball. He doesn't want to take a foul. He's double checking. He's going to draw the cue ball back. Low English. There it is. The jinx is over. Afrin Reyes, his first major title. It's the U.S. Open in 1994. You have to feel so good for that <laughs> gentleman. You really do. And, well, you, Nicky Varner, you feel sorry for. He had a great tournament, but he's already won this thing twice. There's his first title. 
The 1994 U.S. Open champion is Efren Reyes. He knocks off Nick Varner 9-6 and becomes the first foreign player ever to win the U.S. Open. Standing by with the champ, our own Alan Hopkins. And congratulations to you, Efren. I was watching the match. In the beginning of the match, you made some key safeties and some great kick shots. But toward the end of the match, it looked like you had got a bad break. You played a safety. Nick had just enough room to make the two ball in the corner. And how he was starting to make his march and go ahead of you. And twice now in the World Championship to finish second. Were you thinking about that? Was that on your mind at the time? Oh, I was yeah, he, he said that gonna be happen again. That uh, whenever uh, the his opponent came back and uh, beat him, you know, that's what he think uh, when, when uh, Nick Barron made that uh, good uh, kick safety shot. Okay, well, it was on your mind, but anyway, you won the U.S. Open and congratulations and a uh, fine job, U.S. Open champion. Back to Dave. It was fun, Efren Reyes was terrific. So was Nicky Varner, but it was Reyes' day. He wins the U.S. Open 9-6. For Alan Hopkins and everybody.